So I'm really excited to welcome you to our Lunch and Learn event today. Um, I, uh, we are here to hear about Cubico, a practice intelligent platform for medical practices. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview, but I'm going to hand to Chris and then he's uh, going to tell you all about Cubico. And you can tell me whether your information on your website is incorrect as well. Oh, well, we've got Rob on the call too, so he'll be under that too. He's, he's the website man. Cubico providers provides over 500 metrics paired with actionable insights to improve general practice. Cubico harnesses over 170 data points, integrating and translating disparate data into meaningful insights about your practice. No work, no spreadsheets, no uploads, just the data you're longing for to guide your decisions. Uh, Cubico includes three products, including Cubico Assist, a free, yes, a free dashboard that contains a range of metrics to help you manage your business and care for your patients during COVID-19. So I thought that was all very interesting and looking forward to hearing from you today, Chris. So I'd like to hand over to you for your presentation. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Let me share my screen. This is always like the moment of truth, you know, am I a tech company that can use tech? Um, but I think that's coming through all okay, Heather, that all good? Yes, at your it end? is. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Well, hey, um, I'm Chris, as I said before, the founder and CEO of Cubico. Um, Cubico is a practice intelligence platform. So it's designed, about, designed to distill all the noise out there, all the bits of confusion um, to help make running a practice easier. Now, I'm going to call out something just to begin here. Um, medical practices call themselves practices. And I know that you call your accounting practices practices. And it gets confusing. And let's just own that, that today when I talk about practices, I'm talking about the medical clinics. So I'm going to try and say clinics today, but go with me because sometimes I get really passionate and, uh, and just sort of start talking about medical practices. What we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to talk about what we do at Cubico, how it all works, give you a bit of a demo, a bit of an insider look at what practices are looking at, and then quickly at the end, just run through the setup process. Rob from my team is uh, on the line as well in chat, uh, but we're going to do questions at the end. Hey, I know a lot of these sessions have a bit of a format to it. Um, I'm a bit of a storyteller. So I'm going to tell you a story about where I've come from and where we're going. And hopefully it answers a lot of those questions you've got about what we do, what we do well, what we don't do, and who we integrate with. First up, though, um, I feel like I need to share an embarrassing photo. After the last fortnight that we've had so much time around in Australia, um, time for some embarrassing photos. Hey, this was me about 11 years ago. I graduated as an accountant here in Brisbane. And uh, that was me. Uh, so I graduated as an accountant and thought, oh, I actually don't want to be an accountant. I love numbers and I love accounting, but I don't want to be an accountant. And I've always had a really strong, strong social justice passion. And here in Brisbane, there's a suburb called Anala, which of the lowest 10 socioeconomic postcodes in Queensland, it's the only non-Indigenous community. So there was a charity there that was doing amazing work looking after probably the most vulnerable people in our community, a medical clinic. So I went and started working there. I wanted to do something back, give something back. We had amazing doctors, amazing nurses, amazing reception team. Um, and I joined as the business manager and the accountant. So that's me at week three. Um, you can see much more hair there. These fluoros don't let me get much away. And uh, we were in a pretty tough spot. The being a not-for-profit didn't mean for loss. And I remember just sort of thinking and seeing there thinking, oh, how are we going to make this a sustainable business? How are we going to make this a sustainable charity? And hey, there was a lot of those sleepless nights that I'm sure you can relate to with some of your medical practice clients when they're just trying to work out how to make it all come together. And so I started building dashboards and I started building dashboards to help understand what we needed to run a successful clinic. And we looked at a lot of the wrong things along the way. And I've got to own that. You know, we looked at things that we could easily get our hands on. We ran a profit and loss from zero. We ran a billings report from um, best practice. We ran a HR report from Tanda. And because it was easy, it made pretty dashboards, but it actually didn't give us dashboards that gave us real insights to improve our business. And I think that's something that's really important. It's quite easy to make dashboards that just highlight the easy things, but sometimes the value comes from the insights on the harder things. So for clinics, we're doing a lot to help them manage time and diaries, manage the dollars and the numbers. And finally, and most important to me and most important to a lot of your medical practice clients, how to manage care and provide opportunities to provide better care. Because you'll notice in the health space, there's a reason a lot of people get involved. It's because they want to care for people. So what do we do at Cubico? Moving on to one of those sort of key things to cover off. 
we take data from the practice management system. So um, in this case, best practice, which is using a lot of primary care. Um, so Cubico is built for general practice and soon we're gonna be doing specialists with Genie as well. We take data from Zero, so the practices accounting system. We take data from Tander and few, soon we'll take it from a few other HR systems. And then we also scrape the MBS, so the medical benefits scheme, the scheme that all your doctors are billing under, we scrape that data too. And what we do is we bring it together in really easy to understand dashboards. We show it in metrics that are accessible on both the desktop and the mobile to bring this data to life for clinics. So they don't need Excel spreadsheets. They don't have to you know, track things themselves. They don't have to run monthly reports. And you know what? This is our promise to our clinics, using the practice data to easily find opportunities and solve problems. You notice that doesn't mention beautiful dashboards. That doesn't mention beautiful reports. What it does mention is how we find opportunities and solve problems for the clinic. And I think when I'm talking to you today as, as practices, trusted advisors, as their accountants, as their bookkeepers, as their partners, if you can help your customers solve problems and find opportunities, is that not a beautiful space for you to be? Is that not a really exciting space for you to be? Does that not create the engagement so much more than once a year? So for us, that's really important. We're working with a lot of accounting firms from all over the country who bring Cubico into their stack. So they've got zero, they've got receipt bank, they've got a few things in their stack already that they love. They bring Cubico into it because it consolidates that around them, but it also gives them the opportunity to be that trusted advisor without them having to build all those insights themselves. They rely on us who are supporting over 600 clinics all around the country to be building those insights for them. Finally, people say, Chris, where's the name Cubico from? Uh, I like to tell you this one. Cubico, spelled a bit differently, is actually the Japanese god of agriculture, knowledge, insight, and wisdom. And hey, I know Kelly and Rob are both on the line today, and they will confirm that agriculture, I will be no help with, city boy here through and through. But knowledge, insight, and wisdom, is that not a perfect use of a data platform? You know, how can the data provide insights into how the nurse workload can be increased? How can, the, how can we provide knowledge around what billings we're missing? Things like that is a perfect use of data. So, hey, we're about 10 minutes into the session now. So I thought, that's me, that's my background, that's my story. Heather, did I cover off a lot of that cool stuff to begin? Um, and hopefully you got all those key points for you there? Yes, very good. Awesome. <laughs> um, I told Heather to start, I'm like, I'm a bit of a chatter and I'm a bit of a storyteller. So I'm gonna tell a story. Um, I hope that's all right. But while I'm, I'm just resharing Cubico, to give you a bit of a demo, um, I thought that's a good question to ask. So, hey, this is what Cubico looks like to, to you um, and to your clinics. Uh, when they log in, it's designed to be beautiful and it's designed to be engaging. Um, we think that's so important in health. There's a lot of ugly software around there. We design it to be beautiful and engaging. What, they, what the clinic can do can limit what everyone can see. So I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite metrics today. You don't necessarily need to give everyone in the clinic, in the practice, access to all this data. And I know a lot of our accounting partners only have access to certain sections of Cubico because they don't want to be involved in things that have patient care outcomes involved with them. That's not where they operate. That's not where they sit. Thought I'd start off, though, with um, just some of the key metrics that clinics around the country are tracking at the moment. And we find that a lot in our summary page. And if you've got any health, health, health clients around the country at the moment, this is some great questions to be asking them. So Cubico, really easy to use. You jump into the page here. Um, you can choose different timeframes. This is our summary page. So it's just a really quick way to see it. But we start with the all important, what you build. And then below this, we actually give you the ability in Cubico. And if you're building something for your customers yourself, this is really important as well. We let you set budgets and targets for nearly everything. So last week, this clinic built $39,000. Was that a good number or a bad number? Who knows? So by putting budgets and targets with data, it actually makes it really powerful. Cubico is really active, so you can click here and jump through to total billings. And then we show you each practitioner and what they build, year on year comparisons and budgets as well down to the day level. Um, for you as advisors and trusted partners, sometimes you want more detail. Every metric has a download to Excel. So you can put it into whatever your existing frameworks are around reporting, put it into your branding, put it into your look. Um, but we do the hard work in getting all that data there for you together. Um, so if we jump back to our summary page, we're focusing on things like your billings, 
your wait time. This is one that we don't give a target though. This is when we show how you've gone in comparison to previous weeks. Um, I know you've probably been to a medical clinic and had to wait longer than 4.2 minutes. So what we do is we show how that's changed in the clinic since the previous period. So this clinic has gone from a 2.3 minute wait time to a 4.2 minute wait time. That's an 84% increase. Something's happening there. And then bulk billing rates, you'll hear more and more chat about how that's happening across the sustainability of the industry. Jumping down into something that hopefully is a bit more interesting for you, we talk a lot about time. And I know this isn't dollars, but time is the major driver of billings in medical care. You have a limited amount of time to consult with patients. Consulting with patients generates a billing event. So utilizing time is so important. It's not like retail though, where time can sit on the shelf and you can use it again later. Once that block of time is gone, once that day's passed, if it wasn't filled and utilized, you can't get it back. So we show you really pretty easy ways to understand your time and how much capacity you had left available. One of the biggest metrics that we're tracking with a lot of clinics around the country is looking at your billings per hour and appointments per hour. And this is probably as most technical as I'll go on today's session, but I'm just going to bring this up because actually a really great conversation to have with your clinics. Um, a lot of people have always spoke about billings per appointment. You know, it was an easy one to do. You get total billings, you divide it by total appointment count. How do you go? Um, I would ask that, and I'd ask probably to the auditors on the call too, what is a standard appointment? What is a standard appointment? Was it long? Was it short? Was it a six minute script? Was it a half hour uh, mental health uh, appointment? So what we do is we normalize everything across, across the clinic into hours. And you can see here doctors that are seeing quite a few people per hour and billing a lot versus not seeing very many people and not billing very much. And then your outliers on either side. And what we do here is we then break it down with ways to help clinics. Uh, how to increase their chronic disease management, which actually is probably the biggest earner for general practice at the moment. Jumping over to some other sort of cool features in the platform before we jump into the zero data, which I'm gonna throw you through. One of the biggest areas of success we have with clinics is helping them find opportunities to provide more, more opportunities for care. So there's a lot of item numbers and if you've ever been to a doctor, you've probably seen that they build something. And those item numbers are what they build to Medicare. What we do and what you can do as an advisor to a clinic is sort of say to them, look, we're looking at your data and we're saying, look, there's this opportunity and there's 918 patients eligible. And if you did all those opportunities to provide that patient care this year, do you know it's worth $52,000 to your clinic? And as an advisor, as a partner to a clinic, this is really powerful because you can actually show them where to focus in in areas of their business. And we do that work for you. So this clinic, you can do this uh, five times per year. And right now this clinic's only done 8% and we're about over halfway through the year. So you'd wanna be at 50%. So we kind of do a lot of work here around guiding you as their partners about where they can go to provide that extra care. All right, um, enough on care. Let's do some, let's do some accounting. Let's, let's jump there. We're going to jump to our zero insights. Hey, we didn't want to replicate what was in zero already. So Cubico pulls that data from zero, pulling that data from the practice management systems. And what we want to do is show you ways to get that data in more of a context for team members that might not have access to zero. So we know in a lot of clinics, there might be the practice manager the clinic manager who uses zero, but the owners or the principals actually probably aren't using the financial system every day. But if they have access to Cubico, they can jump here and see how their profit's going, how they're tracking. Really key for them to be able to get access to that information without needing to go to zero. So we guide that there. We do a similar thing with your age receivables and age payables to show you what's there and what needs to be paid. So if there's nothing to be done, no need to jump into zero that day. One of the areas I love most of all where we bring data together is what we're doing here is we're bringing data together from the chart of accounts from the profit and loss and showing each account and what it, and we're looking at how we could choose a month here, let's choose June. I hope we've got demo data for June loaded in here. Um, and what we can do is we can choose a month and this is all the expense accounts and what the value was in those expense accounts. But then we tie it back to the data from the practice management system. And we, you know, and this is a made up data set, but in this clinic in June, each appointment in that clinic had $102 worth of expenses. Or well, for each hour GPs were seeing patients, $465. This is a made up clinic. If it was a real clinic, they'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, probably wouldn't be on this webinar today. Uh, they'd be in a whole world of hurt. Um, as a percentage of total billings, how you're tracking there, and also per new patient. 
And we know that every clinic and every one of your customers would have a different chart of accounts. So say you wanted to do just wages and super, you can choose those two accounts and everything adjusts just to show you that data on those accounts. So for a lot of clinics, this has been really amazing. With two clicks, you could tell them, you know, back in June, for each appointment our doctors did, we spent $37 on wages or 70% of billings. There's some real sustainable metrics there for the clinic. Or if I'd chosen some marketing accounts up here, this might've been how much it costs per new patient in the clinic. So if this clinic was doing a real push on growing its patient cohort and they were spending this much on marketing, you could look back last month and just say, wow, this is what we earned from that. We track that over time for you as well. Hey, I've got a few minutes left. Wanted to show you one or two of my other favorites. Uh, we've done a lot of work with a lot of great accountants all around the country to do work on practice forecasting. It's often where a lot of time goes and a lot of time is spent extracting historical data to build Excel models to look into the future. And we've automated that here for you. So what we do is you can choose what period of data you want to take data from. You could do this for an individual practitioner and by practitioner, I mean a doctor in your clinic, and you can do a forecast for the number of weeks to come. And then say we're going to do a forecast now for the next 10 weeks. Below here, we actually therefore forecast what the clinic will bill and how many patients it will see. And we can do that on a daily, week or month level as well, which is all awesome. Great to know for the clinic what we're forecasting they'll bill and how here they'll see. But we also let you do some analysis here. So this clinic was, if we looked at the diaries for the next 10 weeks, about 3,900 hours of doctor time. We're looking at getting a new doctor. So that's gonna go up to 4,300 hours of doctor time. What does it do to the forecast? How can this business change what will happen? Or at the moment, this clinic on average is billing $47 per appointment. What if we move from being bulk billing to mixed billing? And that went to $60 per appointment. What does it do to the adjustments there? That's actually a 26% increase in total billing to this clinic. So we made that really easy for you to interact with your customers um, and your clients around that. We also show them what they need to do to break even. So as the accounting partner, in the back end of Cubico, you put in income that comes in outside of seeing patients and also your expenses outside of seeing patients. And we will show you and show the clinic where they need to sit to break even and beat those targets this week, next week, and the week after. And hey, this one actually came out of COVID when clinics diaries were all over the shop. Our world was changing so much. Clinics were finding it really hard to get a bit of a bearing on where they were sitting. So by doing that, they could really see, oh, look, actually we're on track or we're not on track. And it's really helped the clinic sort of understand um, what they're doing as a business. Finally, one last table that a lot of our clinics love, and I know a lot of um, accounting partners will prepare these for clinics, and that's looking at all the clinic's workforce and getting these key headline numbers. And hopefully if you're not even looking at Cubico, but you wanna know what to talk to your clinics about, this gives you some ideas. So this is what I would say would be the top healthcare things to talk to your customers about. So this is the clinic as a whole, but then we break it down per doctor. So let's say this is Dr. Jane. Looking at, uh, we're looking at last month here, Dr. Jane's diary was 61% full. She had 53 hours open to see patients. And of that, she spent 32 hours of it seeing patients. Dr. Jane billed $9,000. And of that 37%, came from chronic disease management. And chronic disease management are different item numbers in the Medicare schedule that have a much higher value, but they also provide great care for your more complex patients. Moving over, we then tell you, look, that meant per patient $73, per hour they were seeing patients $277, seeing 3.7 people per hour, 95% was bulk billed of 124 appointments and one patient. And hey, so many of our amazing accounting and bookkeeping partners, this is the table they start with. This is the table they've been collecting in Excel for you know, years. And here it is automated, ready to go, one click, um, happy days. So hey, that's my 20 minutes sort of under wraps there, Heather. I think I'm hopefully on time there. Um, hey, I get so excited by this that I probably uh, could talk forever. Um, but hopefully that's gonna give you a bit of an insight. We've got over 500 metrics um, in our platform. Um, so there's a lot that we can do. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all today with you because I think it would uh, probably put everyone to sleep. They're all uh, health nerds like me. Um, but I just quickly thought I'd talk you through what the process is to get a customer um, on board and how that can all come together, if that's all right, uh, just quickly here. So what happens is, look, it's not a fully automated process because data is so important that rubbish in will always lead to rubbish out. Rubbish in will always lead to rubbish out. 
And we know in people's systems, they've got doctors set up as nurses and they've got nurses set up as pharmacists and they've got appointment types they don't use anymore, but it totally distorts their data. And one of the amazing things we've done at Cubico is we've built a pretty awesome community all around enhancing life in your, in your clinic. So we do webinars every second week with our customers and we get between 100 and 200 clinics logged in just to chat about data. Uh, we call it coffee and cake with Cubico. And yes, we do get cake recipes and we have had cake sent in uh, once before. So our whole customer success team who guides clinics through this process um, are all people who've worked in general practice before. So when they call up or you call up to chat about a piece of data, they know what it means. So if someone chooses to take Cubico, uh, we reach out, get it set up on their server. Uh, general practice and, and primary care is still very much in the uh, old school days of data sitting locally on the server in their clinical system. So we get our app installed there. We then do training sessions and take them through that process. And then the beautiful bit of zero is it's an API. So it's one click to integrate the data there as well. Um, I wish all data was that easy to get to as well. So, hey, that's probably enough from me for now. Um, I just thought I'd quickly give the product plug. You know, at the end of the session, I think I get to tell you about the product. Um, we have three products in our stable. Cubico Assist is the free metrics version of Cubico. Just the top 10 metrics of our platform that we provide free to clinics just to help them get through the pandemic. And uh, we have really focused them in that helping provide patient care. We've got the full version of Cubico, which I showed you in the demo today, um, used by nearly 600 clinics all around the country. And finally, we recently launched our multi-site product. And what we do with that multi-site product is if you've got a group of clinics, so we know there's a lot of sort of small corporates popping up, um, you know, two to 15 clinics in the group. What we do is consolidate the data from all those different clinics and all those different zeros and all those different practice management systems into one beautiful dashboard that the CEO loves because everything I showed you in Cubico works so well on the mobile phone. So well on the mobile phone. Um, I'm not gonna tell you how many people log on from their mobile phone at the end of the day to see how they went for that day. So that's my one little sales plug. I think I was allowed to do that at the end there. But love to have questions, love to have a chat about data and anything there that we can do to help. Thank you so much, Chris, for that speech, uh, that talk. It was very interesting and I loved all of the data insights and the, the framing up. Um, it was really interesting I, I, from an accountant's and a patient's perspective of how, how the uh, um, uh, medical practices perhaps are treating us. Now, if anyone does have a question, I welcome you to put your video on and ask the question or um, pop it in the chat area and then I'll call it out if anyone has a question. Um, I, was that a question? Okay, I will ask, um, I, you did have a session around, you were talking about the item numbers. Were you suggesting that um, um, your system was suggesting if someone is coming in with one item number, it can suggest other item numbers around there that they should be exploring? Very much so. It's actually okay. one of our core functions about what we do. Um, twofold, A, it provides better patient care. So um, in Australia, we have a system called chronic disease management, and I'm going to not go too technical here, but in a lot of general practices, it's a real driver for revenue. And it's basically someone with a chronic disease. And if someone's with that chronic disease and they're eligible, there's a whole lot of extra item numbers and item numbers are things we can build to the government or build to the patient to provide better care. So example, they get five visits with an allied health provider. That can be great for someone, you know, to get access to a physio, uh, to get access to a to dietitian if they have a chronic disease. What we do is we crunch the data, do a lot of uh, do a lot of data analytics, and find those opportunities to provide that extra care. A benefit, I would say, of that extra care—I don't know whether that's the right word—is those item numbers have quite a high value associated with them because they are harder; they're more work. Um, so it's a double win: better outcome for the patient, better outcome for the clinic. Um, and, and also, I think you get happier workforce too, because they, uh, you know, our doctors and our nurses are in the game normally because they want to provide care, but they want to be uh, remunerated for that care that they do provide. So it's, it's a bit of a win-win. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. I know that I've done, um, had to have the same treatment in two separate clinics, and one of them was like multiple number item numbers, and the other one was just what, one item number, and I was like, why, why are we doing yeah. differently? Oh, here, look, but, it is yeah. a whole uh, whole art in understanding the MBS schedule. Um, probably had even more hair when I started understanding the MBS than what I do now. Um, but at, at, at Cubico, hey, we're now a team of 16, um, all based here in Brizzy. And you know what? We just spend all day interpreting that and crunching data and doing that hard work for you. Um, and that's what we do really well. So, yeah, we definitely play to our strengths on that one. Absolutely. A lot easier 
to um, outsource that to you than to the Excel spreadsheet mm. and and uh, um, your own um, um, strain, brain strain to try and do that. Now, does anyone have any questions they'd like to jump on and ask? I did too good a job of being excited yeah. by medical data. <laughs> hey, geez, it's not that's you know. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I think for us, I think one of the big things I say is um, make it part of the stack that what you're mm. using with your customers. Um, they love it because a, a really simple metric we do, I didn't show you today, is we find any work that's been done in the clinic that they forgot to bill. And that work has been done by the doctors, but it hasn't been built. And as a trusted advisor, as their accountant or their bookkeeper, on day one, if they get the software and they find $27,000 of unbilled appointments, they're going to love you for a long time. Um, and that's really important because they then trust How are they getting unbilled appointments? Oh, look, it's a whole complex web, uh, often like home visits or nursing home visits or double bookings or triple bookings. Or, there's so many of them that we needed a whole software system to find them. Oh, um, but, you know, in a lot of clinics, there's been a great little uh, way to help them get, yeah, they've done the work. They should be remunerated for that. We wouldn't ask someone to work for an hour for free. Mm, and that's what they're doing if we don't build those appointments. Um, as their trusted advisor, if you help them find that, they're going to love you even more. Um, but I think it's, it's also just helps the sustainability of that business as well. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you go in with value pricing. <laughs> um, Ron, now you've put your hand up. Do you have a question there? Hey, Ron. Hi, Chris. Hey, Ron. Um, look, uh, I don't have too many medical practices on the book, um, mm -hmm. but I've got involved with a few psychologists over the time. So I suppose that is medical, but they tend to be more sole practitioners rather than mm -hmm. in a clinic. Um, I was really interested to watch that. Yeah, yeah, I am happy to admit that I am an accountant and I do love numbers. And of course, what I'm constantly trying to do as part of my value add is analyze numbers and, you know, get the true meaning behind the numbers. Now, unfortunately, there's very few medical systems that actually interact with the systems that I use, which is primarily zero. So as you would know, and anybody who's an accountant on, the, on this call will know, where do we go? Excel, of course. That's what we do. We suck data into Excel and we start doing things and manipulating things just to watch what your spreadsheets, well, your program was doing and the dashboard you were pulling up it was answering questions that I wouldn't even be game to ask. Because if I asked them, it would take me the next month to come up with the answer. Totally. But, you know, just watching what it was doing, though, you know, the, they were all questions that I would love to have answers to for my medical practitioners because it's so meaningful. Uh, it's the sort of things that we live to analyse because, you know, what is they say the devil's in the detail but you know you until you get down to that level you can't spot problems mm. you know that's that's always my guiding force is understanding where the numbers are coming from and you went down to such a granular level that i was just blown out of the water oh, and I ron to... i can i can admit that our first version was excel spreadsheets and i got sick of updating excel spreadsheets and whenever i went on leave for a week no one else updated my excel spreadsheets <laughs> so that's why we built a system that is plugged into the source data and it calculates the same thing the same way every time which as accountants is really important it can't be calculated one way one week and a different way the next week uh, because yeah. how do you trust it well you know the the, the other thing that you demonstrate to me is um, it's an option that I haven't had for quite a while. Uh, well, I can do it, but it's not an easy answer. What if, all right, and that's what you demonstrate. What if we get this many appointments? What if we do this? And you're giving me a three-weekly projection on the changes. Now, that's what a medical professional wants to see. Medical professionals don't necessarily want to see accounting statistics and data because they, it'd be like them talking to me about x-rays. You know, like, I don't understand the language you're talking. But when you get down to very simple concepts, you know, like I used to say to people, you know, one of my classic lines is, if we increased our, our decreased our debtor days by one day, 
what would be the effect on our, you know, our bottom line. One day, you know, and they, they go, oh, let's do five days, you know. So your spreadsheet would lead people and get them very excited. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to say compliments to what you've Thanks, done. Uh, I'm sure anybody who's had to deal with medical professionals and yeah. try to provide some add-on value would love your program. So I'll go oh, quiet thanks, mate. now. Thank you. No, that's good to hear and, and, and really appreciate that. I think for us, it's been, um, we don't build in a vacuum. We have this amazing list of every request that comes in from every customer, whether they're an accountant, whether they're the clinic manager, whether they're a doctor, and it goes into our wish list. And we literally just start with the most requested thing and keep working down the list. And something else will come in and four people will suddenly want that. You know what? We did it. And like when the COVID rules changed at six o'clock on a Thursday night, um, we had a list in Cubico the next day of everyone who was booked in that day, but because of their age, was no longer eligible. And that was, you know, days of work for a clinic right there. So, yeah, it's, it's really important to stay close to what helps make the industry better and helps to make life better in the industry. Awesome. Thank you for your um, insight there, Ron. Um, Kelly, you have a, your hand up. Did you want to share something? Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> thought, thanks hi. for joining us. No worries. I thought I, I thought I better chip in here. Um, so I guess one thing that you said before, Heather, I think is really important for accountants if you do have medical practice clients and you are doing um, any advice work or um, fixed price or value sort of billing is um, being able to use a tool like Cubico to actually improve this, not just the services you offer, but your margins as well, because essentially, as Ron was saying, stuff that you would have to take hours doing in Excel spreadsheets or you just didn't do it all, um, you now have access to that. So you can actually go in and deliver your advisory meeting without having to spend you know, eight hours prepping data beforehand. And um, if there is people prepping that data, it's basically out of date, you know, by the time you've had your meeting. So, um so it's it's saved it certainly saved us heaps of time in that respect, and um, the other thing is I think when I first started with medical practices and moved more into advisory work, not just compliance work, it was so difficult at that point in time because we didn't have the detailed information of the inputs. So for most other industries, you have all the data for the inputs. And most other industries understand the value of those inputs and how much it costs to deliver a product or a service um, to a client. But medical practices generally don't have any concept of what it costs them to deliver the service. So um, being able to solve that wasn't really until Cubico came along that we could really get a really good grasp on that. So that's just my two cents. Yeah. No, we re yeah. really appreciate it, and and the I, like I I I access and view a lot of da da dashboards, and I really like that, and uh, was really impressed with um the the level of detail that you went to, and the interesting insights that you were pulling out as to what both Kelly and and Ron were talking to. So, thank you. It's awesome. Does anyone um, have any other questions or insights for uh, Chris that they'd like to share? Looks like we, we um um looks like we didn't even get Rob didn't even get the chance to ask oh. uh, answer a difficult question. Robo, we should have pretty sure could give you a call a curveball, mate. You know, uh, anyone I was have a difficult question for Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I think the best bit to say is uh is, is uh it's it's great having an awesome team that just live and breathe this stuff. Um, it's not one person. It's not you by yourself in your accounting practice trying to do it all yourself. Um, outsource that because it's mm. a whole complex mess. And, um, you know, the, the software keeps changing and, and APIs keep changing and database schemas keep changing. Um, it's our job to be abreast of that. And, yeah, having a team like Rob and the rest of the team here in Brizzy has been, has been a pretty big part of that. And um, very excited that you're Brisbane-based. Um, we have some incredible tech solutions here in Brisbane, so that's very exciting. And it's very um, uh, rewarding um, to be an accountant or a bookkeeper or an advisor who can actually support a client with a with the the, the 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 tools like that. You know, accountants don't save lives; they save livelihoods, and uh, that solution really can um, um, help. Uh, you can see so many people um, in the community. So really happy to have that. Now, I'll just ask you um, quickly: just remind people, Chris, if you could, how can people get in contact with you? 
Yeah, look at here is a slide I prepared earlier with a QR code because QR codes haven't had enough um, business in 2021. Give me two seconds, I'm going to share that share that with you. Um, so um, yeah, love to chat um, on LinkedIn. I can uh, put this up now so you can see that one. But also um, we've got an uh, awesome lot of information on our website and also a link straight to my diary. Is that one coming through? All right. Yes, it has come through. Yep. So we have yep. had so, a question. <laughs> oh, Does the system... Saving the best for last. <laughs> Does the system handle allied health practitioner and does it do billing? Yes. So um, we don't do allied health um, just yet. Um, it is something that's on our roadmap, um, but, but at this stage, um, no. So we don't do allied health, unfortunately, unless they are using best practice. Um, and we know there's quite a bit of an allied health cohort. Um, for us, it's all about the source system. So the data source system is so important. Um, we have a mantra that you have to upload or download anything it's not going to keep happening. So yeah, a lot of it's about the sources. And if you head to our website, um, uh, Rob, then you can see who we inter integrate with. Um, and then for, yeah, so that's, that's sort of the, the big one there. Um, Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Chris. Was there any other questions? Some people have said they're going to book in for um, a deep dive session and uh, Rob has put in, um, I think that is a, a link to, to book an appointment in the chat area. So thank you very much. So thank you very much, um, Chris and Rob, for joining us thank and you. sharing with us <laughs> all about Cubico. We really enjoyed the session, really enjoyed learning about the solution and uh, um, look forward to hearing more in the future about your solution. Yep, but no more questions come through. But thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thanks for your lunchtime, everyone. And uh, great to chat. Thanks, Heather.